When we look at geometric probability, we're doing the same basic work we do in normal probability, except that we're working in terms of items that are not discrete. For example, on any given line segment, there's an infinite number of points. Between any two points, I can find a third point, providing a whole mess of possible outcomes. Whereas when I compare that to using pictures, I have five pictures to pick from. I can actually see all five individual photographs. And then three might have one person, two might have someone else. So when I'm talking here, it's kind of different. The math doesn't change. So if I want to talk about the probability of landing on the segment RS, probability P, parentheses denotes the event I'm talking about, and in this case the event is RS. You could also write this as the probability of landing on RS. There is no rule that says you have to abbreviate in here. You can be as explicit as you want to to communicate what you're looking at. So the probability of landing on RS is going to be, well, how big is RS? It's five units. The total segment is 25 units long. Always reduce your fraction first. That reduces to one-fifth, which is 0 0.2 or 20 percent. It's a good habit to be in to write every probability as three answers. Reduced fraction, decimal, and percentage. You never really know what someone that you're talking to is going to want to use as their preferred method or what teacher is going to expect as an answer. So always be prepared to give all three just to be on the safe side. So as a review, the number of outcomes I want over the total number of outcomes yields me a probability. Hasn't really changed. The only difference is here I'm looking at a long continuum of things. When I want to talk about not, probability of not QR, I have some choices. Generally speaking, the preferred method is to find the probability of QR and subtract that from 1. Now, since these numbers are very small, I could also just as easily add up the number of things that are not QR and then go ahead and do the same fraction. I'm going to take both methods in turn. So for example, let's go ahead and do it using the adding up method. 7 plus 5 gives me 12 units of distance that are not on segment QR. Now, 12 out of 25 does not reduce as a fraction, so I'm stopped there. Now I need to turn that into some kind of a decimal. For that, I'm going to need a calculator. And let's go ahead and we'll run that. So take 25 divided by 12 divided by 25. I get the decimal of 0.48, which is the same thing as 48%. Now the other approach I can take is to find out what QR is and subtract it from 1. So 1 minus the probability of landing on QR. Well, that's 1 minus 13 25ths. Now, if I'm really good at fractions, I can go ahead and do that. But it might be easier to make it into a decimal. When I calculate this all out, well, the probability of this is going to be 5-2. So point five. Two. Oops, slid off the screen there. Let's put you back on. 1 minus 0.52. Now that's 13 25ths. And that, coincidentally, is 0.48, which we've already established is the same thing as 48%. The advantage of this is that oftentimes it's easier to know what the probability of something happening is and to consider all the possibilities of it not happening. Both methods will get you where you need to be.